today we have a rhema word and we're going to continue on the series the essentials last time i spoke we spoke about faith being essential to life amen well this week we're going to focus on what we were just doing worship worship and the title for this sermon is the war for your worship let's turn the bibles to psalms 95 we're going to read this chapter in its entirety amen oh come and let us sing to the lord let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also the sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand today today if you will hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion as in the day of trial in the wilderness when your fathers tested me they tried me oh they tried me though they saw my work for 40 years I was grieved with it, that generation and said it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to raise my hands to give you worship. Father God, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to come before your people. Father God, I pray that I decrease as you increase in my life. Continue to use me as a vessel to spread your covenant. I pray that I speak with clarity. I pray that I don't miss it to the right or to the left, Father God, but I shall be in your will. And I pray that everyone that's in the sound of my voice, lives should be changed for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A war for your worship. It is essential. Whether you know it or not, there is a war for your, for your worship. That's why it's essential. Every day, there's a battle for your worship. All, we all are worshipers creating to bring pleasure and glory to God who made us. Like I mentioned to you before, we were made by God for God. One of the reasons was to worship him. I don't know if you know, but at your core, you are a worshiper. You can't help it. That's what you were made to do. You may not feel that you are the worshiping type, but let me let you know you are a worshiper. You can't help it. Once again, it's what we were made to do. The question is, who or what will you worship? Will you worship the creator? Or will you worship the creation? One will win out, regardless. When you get a chance, I didn't mention when I first started, there is a QR code for this uh, message as far as the notes. Uh, you can follow along that way. 
They may be popping up on the screen in a moment and why they're doing that. When I came across this uh, message, I was going to go in another direction. Uh, I was going to talk about the praise and worship and have an illustration of what to do, talking about the cherubims and praising the Lord, but the Holy Spirit said, where am I at in that? A, a quick conviction of something that I would have been doing to show the people and the Lord said, where am I at in it? And I had to change. And so the message today is what you will get directly from the Holy Spirit because I had to obey what he wanted to show us. So there's a whole message on praise and we'll get to that point, but today is about worship. And we're gonna dissect the difference of the two, amen? So, the creator or the creation, which one will we worship? Uh, a couple of months ago, um, my siblings and I had to uh, drive to Chicago. My, my aunt uh, had a birthday party. And on the way, and we hadn't road tripped in a while. And so we got to talking. And it was at the time, I think it was like January. So it was at the time when uh, Cat Williams had had an interview on Club Shay Shay. It was one of those things, uh, Shannon Sharp, who don't know who Shay Shay is, that's a former football player who has a podcast now. And we were discussing it, and, and as we kept talking, my brother was like, let's, let's turn it on, let's, let's hear it. You know, he's a comedian, so it was funny. But as we got down the road, and you know, most of us in traveling in good time, Chicago's about four hours away, right? And so, as we got through the podcast, we passing about an hour. Man, I'm thinking in my head, most podcasts stop at about an hour. How long will this podcast be? And my brother said, oh, it's three hours. <laughs> and I said, what? A three-hour podcast, and so the the as we kept going through it, you know, we was laughing and we said, you know what, it had don't it doesn't seem like it's been that long. And with that podcast, I, I, I when we finished it, one thing that came in my mind is like, wow, how many people are watching that? And so that graphic that you see on the screen right here. That was just in 13 days of how many people viewed that podcast. Millions in 13 days. Don't know what day we watched it, but that was in 13 days. It's been months. Shannon Sharp said that that podcast alone made him more money than any ye one year in his NFL career. Needs to say a lot of people saw that, right? I came to the conclusion is if you were like me and you listened to that podcast, there's no way in this year, 2024, that you will not be able to finish at least three Audible books. If we direct our time to something like this, I know we can finish at least three Audible books. <clears throat> also, if you watch that, I don't want anybody who watched that to say that church service is too long. That you have shown that you have the propensity to endure for three hours, so church service should not be an issue. But it came to, I had the, the feeling of, what do we worship? And someone would say, I don't worship that. Did you put your time to it?
Did you not only put your time to it, did God get the glory? When I was putting together the first option, I was talking to Minister Darius, I, I started thinking about it, and the Holy Spirit came down, and sometimes, you know, he let me go through things before he let me know that ain't the way. This wasn't one of those occasions. He flat out told me, where am I in it? And I said, wow. We worship things that we don't realize we worship. Just because you might not be bowing down to it does not mean that you're not giving your time, talent, and treasure to it. That is one of the greatest temptations. To give in to worship or idols. So let's dive into it. What is worship? Worship is worth ship. It is to esteem with worth, to honor, to place the highest value on, to bow down, like we saw at the altar here, to acknowledge in all things, catch this, everlasting gratitude. To lay prostrate in a posture of surrendering. And catch this, to ascribe credit all things to. That word ascribe is not a common word in our English uh, vocabulary. But it is different from describe. There is a difference. See, describe is when you praise, when you talk about something, or you describe how it look, or who they are. When you say, God is my protector, my healer, the light and dark, my rock, the joy of my salvation, the joy in a time of sorrow, the lily in the valley, when we describe those things, that is a description. Ascribe is different. Ascribe is worship. Don't miss it. Ascribe is worship. Describe is praise. When we ascribe to something, it talks about the who and you have to put a two O in front of it, a T O in front of it. You gotta say, hey, not only this is who this person is, this is what this person has done. So when a person is worshiping, they are putting in a place of, I thank my Lord for what he has done, not just who he is. They both have a place. It's, it's no different than, uh, I give this example, happiness and joy are both great but they're two different things. They're not the same. Praise and worship are not the same. Happiness is a byproduct of joy. Praise is a byproduct of worship. Don't miss it. See, we can, we can fake praise. I know you don't want to be honest today, but you can fake praise. It's no different when you're at a, a sporting event and the waves start. You could be sitting on your phone doing a bunch of things. The moment someone gets up and goes here, you go here, and you're thinking in your head, I don't know why we're doing it, but since everybody else is doing it, I'm going to do it. In here, sometimes a song could be going off and somebody next to you stand up and your reflex is to stand up. And your Holy Spirit is saying, why do we stand up? And you're like, I don't know. I, next person just stood up too, so I stood up. We all do it. We've, we've done it. It happens. It's our reflex. However, though, we can fake that, but we can't fake worship. I don't care how hard you want to try, but you can't fake worship. 
Worship is different. Worship is when we know what God has done for us. And that's why the scripture says to worship God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. Praise is our action towards God. Worship depends on if God will receive it, allow it, or accept it. Don't miss it. We can praise him, but true worship is what you offer to God. And it's God's prerogative whether he'll accept it or not. And whether he'll accept it or not is whether it is true in your heart. That's why you can't fake it. It'll be, we'll see it, but God is probably t- nugging at you, telling you, where am I at in that? Do you really know me? I know it, 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 it crushed me when I wanted to do my whole thing, and he, Lord, mm-mm. <laughs> Worship is when we have your obedience to God. So I had to change it. It's a genuine worship. Here's the difference with that. When we worship anything other than God, that's idolatry. And we serve a God. We, we, we always hear he's a jealous God. But when we have things going on in our life, and this is why this message is so important today, when we have things going on in our life, which we all do, we have to ask ourselves, where and how is God getting the glory? And we can get so bogged down into the things that we do on a daily basis that we forget to give him honor and glory. Let's look at Isaiah 44th chapter, the ninth verse. God cautions us. He says, all who make idols are nothing and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. When someone says, man, why are you worshiping that rapper or this and this, whoever you want to put in that place, and when you come to that defense of, man, I don't do that, I don't do that, Look at the time spent of what you have done. How well do you know them? If you can spout out their history, their number one album, their backstory of who they dated. If you can do all of those things, I'm just using the rapper, but you can fill in the blank of whoever it is. If you know them more than you know scripture, They have become their, your idol. And the shame is that most of us don't even know it. We don't know who, who is, who's really our idol, who we really worship. Here's the key. Worship is only reserved for God. Worship is only reserved for God. We can praise other people. We can give them their flowers. We can do all of those things. But worship, got to be careful. We got to be careful who we worship. To the point where God will position us to inform us if we are paying attention that you put this thing in front of me. Repent. Come back to me. The problem is a lot of us do not recognize that correction. And we continually go down that road of placing the creation over the creator. And that's what God is trying to tell us today. Let's look at Psalms 29th chapter, the first and second verse. But in your leisure, I want you to read this whole chapter of Psalms 29. We'll focus on these two verses. 
Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. In a moment, let's just replace ascribe with worship. Worship to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Worship to the Lord, glory and strength. Worship to the Lord, the glory do his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Worship begins and ends with God. It begins and ends with God. The key is this. When we acknowledge the creator, that's when we enter into worship. That's when we enter into it. But it begins and ends with him. It is a cycle that should be taking place. It's no different if I handed you this, you took it, and then you gave it back to me. I gave it to you to do what, whatever I'm telling you to do with it, but once you're doing it, you need to give it back to me. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. He gave you your time, your talent that you have. All he's asking for you to do is give it back to him. And when we get the praise and when we do those things, if we take the time to say, you know what, thank you for acknowledging my talent, my skill set, the things that I do, but glory be to God. But glory be to God. See, that's the key. When I was putting together the message and I'm like, okay, this will go good and they'll get that. Then I started thinking about it, to be honest with you all, and definitely honest with myself. Was it for me or was it for God? Was it for you to say, man, that's a great word. That's a great message. God is like, where am I at in that? Now, if that would happen and you give that to me, my job is to say, thank you, glory be to God. You give it to me, I give it to him. You give it to me, I give it to him. So no, whether it's me, the praise team, whatever you do, if you get glory for what you do and hold on to it, now you've replaced God. Now you've replaced God. We have kings in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar. We have all these things that God gave something to them, and they start be, it, it went from glory be to God, glory be to God, to, yeah, I did that. Thank you. Yep, here's what I did to make this happen. I did, I did, I did, I did. And God is saying, you've forgotten all about me. You've forgotten who gave it to you. It's our posture towards God. See, praise can be a feeling. See, you might have came in here, didn't have your coffee yet, and you kind of waiting to catch the this praise team is going to hit that one note that I'm going to get up, and now I'm... I got it. Waiting on the feeling. It's not worship. That's not the worship. God is basically saying, listen, no matter how you feel today, the fact that you got up, I'm worthy of the praise. No, no matter what you're feeling right now, no matter the struggle you had before you walked in here, I'm worthy of the praise. That battle that you're going through, you're worthy of the praise. But here's the key, and here's why sometimes it's hard for us to get into that groove is because you must know God to worship God. You know, 
those, if you, if you just joined or just started coming to the church, you know it's, it's different when I made the announcement about John Dixon. But if you were here for any length of time, you would know the impact of he had on this ministry. So when we announce his passing, it's different. Why? Because we knew him. There was a relationship with him. What's your relationship with God? How and what have you, <coughs> excuse me, have you contributed to our, your relationship with God? Worship is only possible through the knowledge of the one worshiped. Don't miss it. Worship is only possible through the knowledge of the one worshiped. You can only worship to the degree of your experience. When growing up, when you would hear the elders in church saying, you know, they're testifying, they say that in that midnight hour, the Lord heard my cry. Yeah. And as a young person, you know, I'm, 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 I'm listening, I'm hearing, but I don't really know. Until the Lord in that night hour heard my cry. That's different. That hits different. When we're singing a song and, and pastor's just holding himself and, and coming to tears, you got to know that is an experience with God. C.C. Winan has a song, uh, The Alabaster Box. It's my, it's my favorite song. And what gets me all the time and pulls at my heartstring is when she says, you weren't there the night he found me. You don't feel what I felt when he wrapped his arms all around me. You don't know the cost of the oil in this alabaster box. You weren't there. The night he found me. That is true worship. Worship is just as significant as your fingerprint. You cannot give God, I can't give God your worship. I can only give him mine. Because of that relationship that we have. The cost of the oil. What, what's the cost of your oil? Because when you know him, you know that it costs you something. If you're worshiping God, you got some skin in the game. You got to know him. That's why you can't fake it. You get to a point where either you're singing or you at any part of your life, you just got to stop and just say, God, you're so good. And I'm not saying it from you just got to have trials and tribulations. What I'm saying is the, the decisions that you got to make, the tests that you're going through, Every aspect of your life, you got to have God within it. And when you overcome that, that becomes your experience. So when it's time to worship, it is different for you. It is different.
God is trying to commune with you. And that experience is when you enter true worship. Whether you're saying a word or not, you're just hugging yourself. And God understands the language. You make it personal. That's why you can't fake worship. In spirit and in truth. Because that's where God dwells. Amen? My God. Worship is when we're ready to surrender. Yeah, when we're ready to surrender. Genuine worship. Our goal is to become genuine worshipers. Imagine coming to church. You know, we, we, it's okay when you're going through something and you're like, man, I just got to get to a house of believers so I can be replenished. Can you imagine if the, you create an upside-down kingdom where you tap into your worship on a daily basis? Where you worship him to the point on Monday, you give him thanks for all that he has done for you, understanding how you got there. Tuesday, you're doing it. Wednesday, you're doing it. Thursday, come around. You're worshiping your God for all that he has done, all of the, the doors he's opened for you, giving him the credit, ascribing to him. Friday rolls around, and now you're so balled up that, man, he's like, oh, my God, look what he has done in my life. <clears throat> Saturday comes around, and you're on fire because you understand and you're worshiping to a point where when you walk through the door on Sunday, the praise team don't gotta do anything because you're bringing the worship. You're not coming to church to worship. You're going to church worshiping. You're at a point where now you are fired up where no matter the song that is being sung, you are in a posture of worship. That is the image God wants for us. Corporate worship is when we can all come together and we can vibe and say, man, my God is so good. He has brought me so far. He has done all of these things. Yes, he wants our praise, but he want to dwell in your worship because in your worship, you remove all your idols. We got to get rid of our idols. My God, that is genuine worship. When you're not just looking to receive, it's okay to receive from the Lord, but you're coming to pour in. You're coming to pour in. Because when somebody don't know him as Lord and Savior, and he see us all, or she sees us all in here worshiping, true, genuine worshiping, they're gonna say, I want that relationship. I want that experience. Catch this. Worship is so essential because whatever you worship, you become obsessed with. Whatever you become obsessed with, you imitate. Whatever you imitate, you become. I'll say it again. Whatever you worship, you become obsessed with. Whatever you become obsessed with, you imitate. And whatever you imitate, you become. Beloved, what are you becoming? What are you becoming? And here's the, to wrap it up in a bow. Whatever you value most will ultimately determine who you are. If you worship money, you'll become greedy at your core, the core of your heart. 
if you worship some sinful habit, whatever your vice is, that same sin will grip your soul and poison your character to death. If you worship stuff, your life will become material, void of eternal significance. If you give all your praise, catch this, to the God of you, you, you will become diluted with yourself. And ultimately you become disappointed because you can't fulfill yourself. A pastor, Louis Giglio, said those things and it stuck in my heart and it makes me think how will I go in my life giving God the glory and it also helped me do a self-assessment what am I putting in front of God what am I putting in front of God let's close with this one Luke 12 16 and 21 And it says in this parable, and I'll paraphrase, there's a rich man, and he is describing what all he has stored up. And he gets to a point where he is basically saying, you know what, I got so much, I got to build bigger stuff to hold all the stuff that I have. I have. I have. Me. The God of you. And here's God's response in verse 20 you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you God is basically saying your life is over all the things that you were pouring up then who will get what you have prepared for yourself this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. I know it's not the rah-rah sermon, but I had to be obedient. I had to be obedient. Because it convicted me. And hopefully it convicted you to the point where you'll start examining yourself to say, what am I putting in front of God? Because whether you know it or not, there is a war for your worship. Yeah. 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 Yeah.